Everyone, welcome to another great episode of the Smooth Business Growth Podcast, where we share 15 minutes of fast-paced, pure marketing strategies proven to move the needle in your business. So I'm your host and Captain Lindsay Phillips. I'm the founder of Smooth Sailing Business Growth, where we help busy entrepreneurs attract and convert customers faster through powerful and consistent content marketing. In fact, if you go to smoothbusinessgrowth.com, you can download your social media roadmap to help you do just that. So today, I've got a bit of a different topic, so I'm not necessarily on the marketing side but this is super crucial and if you're ready for some powerful tips about online hiring then you'll love this because we're chatting with remote hiring expert and co-founder and CEO of freeup.com Nathan Hirsch welcome let's set sail Nathan Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. I mean, obviously, I, you know, being in the online space, um, definitely love everything to do with online hiring. But it, it's so funny. It's like, you know, having in-house employees, it just seems so old school now. <laughs> but people still have a lot of fear of hiring people online. So I really want you to share the benefits of online hiring to help kind of mitigate those fears. Yeah, I mean, we live in a pretty awesome time. If you go back um, 10 to 20 years ago, you weren't able to get access to the remote talent that you are able to today. And instead of hiring from your town and the towns around you and competing mm. with all these businesses, you get access to people from all around the world. But there, there's always going to be risk. And yeah. is the risk more from hiring someone outside your, your community or your town Maybe. I mean, if you hire someone that sits right next to you, there, there's still a chance that they do something stupid or they mm. jeopardize your business in some way. So the risk is always going to be greater than zero. There's nothing I can do to make it zero. But with that said, I mean, I've been hiring people for the past eight plus years and I've never had a serious yeah. issue. We bill 15,000 hours a week and never had a serious issue. And I'm sure that eventually something will happen because that's real life. But the percentage is a lot smaller than people think. And on the back end, I mean, the freelancers care a lot more about providing for their family and building their freelance business. Yeah. than they do about jeopardizing your information. And the biggest thing that you can do isn't the NDAs. It yeah. isn't the um, contracts. It's just building a relationship with people. There, there's really no substitute for that. I agree. And for me, it's like having the pool of experts, like the opportunities are endless. And like, uh, for me, I hire people. I have one in the Philippines, some are Canadian, some are American, and I have solid relationships with them. They've been an integral part of my team forever. Um, yeah, I, and I think that freedom is huge. Yeah, there's just so much flexibility. I mean, you don't have to hire someone for 40 hours a week anymore. Yeah. You can hire someone per project or 10 hours a week or for two months. I mean, you, you really have that flexibility to use people and use agencies and freelancers as you need them. Absolutely. But so what kind of things do we have to do before, you know, we look to any freelance sites um, to set us up for success? I mean, the biggest thing is knowing what you need and what you oh, want. I mean, that I can't tell you how many people just mess up hiring because they don't know what they're looking for. And I know I, I like to break it down into three levels, basic, mid and expert, where a basic level freelancer, they're followers. They might have years of experience, but they're there to follow your systems, your processes. When people say outsourcing or virtual assistant, a lot of times that's what they're talking about. That five to $10 an hour range, non-US, then you got the mid-level, the specialists, the graphic designers, the bookkeepers, the writers. You're not teaching someone how to be a graphic designer, but they're not consulting with you either. They're there to, to do the projects at a high level. And then the experts, the 25 and up, the consultants, the experts, the project managers, the, the agencies, they can execute high-level game plans. They can bring their own expertise to the table. They can consult. They can handle big budgets. So depending on what you're looking for, if you're looking for a follower, or a doer, or an expert, that's incredibly important to make sure you make the right hire before going to any marketplace. That is so true. And I've never really heard anybody break it down that way. Um, I mean, that's how I think in my brain, like followers and doers, where they're like waiting for the instructions and people that are kind of, you know, doers and people that are proactive and, and are higher, higher level, right, with the strategy and stuff like that. So I love that you break that down. Um, that's really important. 
Yeah, and I think it's just that clarity. And, and these are, are real people. They, they don't always fit into perfect categories, but at least you understand what you're looking for. Yeah. Going no, absolutely. It's funny. I get so many people that are like, I, I, you know, I need a VA and I need help. And I'm like, you know, great. This is back when I was doing the VA stuff. And I'm like, great. You know, what kind of tasks are you looking to take on? I have no idea. I just know I'm really busy and I just need help. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh my gosh. Um, so what are the, some of the biggest mistakes that people make when hiring online? Yeah, I mean, one of the biggest things is not setting expectations and getting on the same yeah. page right from the beginning. I mean, by definition, freelancers, they have lots of different clients. They're putting their services out there and every client is different. What's good for one client is bad for another. What another client likes is another client's pet peeve. So the better that you understand yourself, the business model, the, the atmosphere you're putting people in and what the goals of the project are, the better. And getting all that in writing up front saves you so much he said, she said down the line. And totally. I'll even, not scare, but I'll, I'll really set those expectations so people know, hey, I, I can be a little tough to work with. I move fast where we don't right. put up with the small things and, and really make sure someone knows what they're getting into because I'd rather they back out up front before they start before I start investing my time and energy and money into them than for them to tell me two and a half weeks into a project, hey, you know what, this isn't working out. That's so true, right? And, and I think sometimes people are afraid to put those, not that they're negatives, but it's like, hey, this is what it's like up front. If you can hack it, awesome. You're like pre-qualifying them, really. Exactly. And it, it, it's all about just saving your, your time down the line. You can always make more money. You can always hire someone else, but you never get the time back. And what really kills startups is that turnover where it takes three months to replace someone or, or you keep starting projects over again and they don't get complete. That's kind of stuff can kill you. And the way to prevent that is getting on the same page right from the beginning, focusing on what you can control because there's always going to be things in hiring that you can't control personal issues, emergencies, whatever it is, but you can focus on what you can control. And that's the hiring process, the setting expectations and being on the same page. That's so true. Now I know um, it's funny. I was talking to uh, one of my clients who's also looking for someone to do something specific, but they felt overwhelmed by going on the freelance sites and like seeing all the people that are available. Like, how do you, are there some tips on like how to narrow it down and how you move to kind of like the interview process? <laughs> well, I'm one of those people and that's why I built my own marketplace where, where there is no browser. <laughs> I mean, we, we've kind of made it simple. So it's more of, Hey, you put in a request. So as long as you know what you want and we're not really there to tell you, Hey, you need to hire this. We're there to provide you options. Once you let us know what you're looking for. And then going th between one to three applicants is a, a much different experience when they've already been vetted rather than going through 50 to a hundred. So that was kind of my thing back in the day. And, and I kept looking and looking and yeah. I wanted something faster and more efficient. And I didn't want to do 50 interviews and I, I finally just gave up and built it myself. Sweet deal. Now I love, and, and I want to touch upon this, how you said um, that people are vetted and I see that's kind of one of the elements that makes free up um, your company a little bit different. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah. So we get thousands of applicants every week. Um, we, these are virtual assistants, freelancers, and agencies from all over the world. We vet them for skill, attitude, and communication. Nice. And we let the top 1% in for skill, we're not looking for everyone to be a 10 out of 10. We're looking for people that are honest about what they can and cannot do. Right. We're not a marketplace to experiment on our client base. Um, we only want people taking on projects they can do at a high level. Um, so if you're a five out of 10 or an eight out of 10, it's okay. As long as you're honest and you can prove your skills and you're, you're priced accordingly. On the attitude side, we do one-on-one -on -one interviews. We look for people that oh, okay. don't don't get aggressive the second that something doesn't go their way. Right. Um, people that um, we've all worked with someone who's a, a cancer and, and brings everyone mm -hmm. down. We yeah. want people who are positive and, and care about their clients. Um, and then communication. We have 15 pages of communication best practices that wow. freelancers have to memorize and get tested on before they get up. Uh, uh, and that's really important. I mean, the, those communication best practices are really based on my own hiring experiences back in the day. Yeah, that's impressive. Um, what, and again, the other elements that I saw was the, um, those three different categories of uh, people that you can hire, I find really different. Um, so yeah, explain to me, you know, how free up works and, and what makes it different. 
Yeah, so we get thousands of applicants every week, like I mentioned. We take the top 1%, we let them in. As a client, it's free to sign up. There's no monthly fee, there's no minimums, there's no obligation. Whenever you need a freelancer, you don't have to browse. You, you click a button, request a freelancer inside your account. You fill out the request so we know exactly what you're looking for, US, non-US, price range, skill set, all that. We introduce you to someone within a business day. You can meet with them, make sure you like them. If you like them, you can negotiate rate, agree to fix price or hire them. Um, if you don't like them, you can click pass and, and provide us feedback and we'll update the ticket and, and get you some other options. And on the back end, we have 24 seven support. If you have even the smallest issue, smallest need, we're, we're always there to help and answer any questions you have. And then lastly, a no turnover guarantee. So if someone does quit in the middle of the project, we cover replacement costs and get you a new person right oh, away. Oh, wow. So, yeah, that, that's really what we're all about, that, that pre-vetting speed, customer service, and protection. That's huge. And now I have, here's a question for you. Now, I noticed that on different freelance sites or, or whatever, a lot of um, hiring is revolved around projects. So, like, one specific project that only lasts for, you know, a month or uh, five blogs that you need written. Are there... Does this include like ongoing work or is it just project driven? Yeah, I mean, we have clients that have hired 10 full-time customer service reps in the Philippines and oh, they've wow. had them for three years and we've got people who hire someone for a one-time project and never talk to them again or a VA <laughs> for 20 hours a week or three-month project or whatever it is. And and what a lot of clients will do is they'll kind of build their Rolodex of freelancers that they can go to. They might find two designers they like and three writers and a video editor. And then as stuff comes up, instead of having to put in a request and find new people, these people are already, these freelancers are already on their account and they can just reach out and see who's available and get a quota and approve it and get going. That's nice. It feels like it's got a lot of flexibility. Um, so yeah, do you have any, yeah, do you have any tips on the interview process? Like once you've kind of narrowed down, okay, these look like, you know, five great applicants. Um, yeah. What is the kind of next step or do you have any great tips or strategies for the interviewing to get to the, get to the higher so what I like to do is focus on my time. And what that means that during the interview, you know what you're looking for. For example, right. if you want someone that is available every Saturday or you want someone that has experience with X software, then that should be the first questions you ask. Because if the answers to those questions are no, you don't need to continue on the interview for another 10, 30 minutes, whatever it is. So I like to re-go over the, the important things for me. And if, it, if they're not a fit for those, I can part with ways right away. True. And after that, I, I kind of dive into maybe a little trickier questions. What, what can I tell the person that will pull out those red flags? I think mm -hmm. a lot of interviewers look for those standard boil point answers that people are trained to do. I once took a college class on how to interview. Didn't necessarily teach me how to do any particular job well. Um, just taught me how to interview. So what your focus should be is what is this person telling me that shows they don't have the skill that I'm looking for, they don't have the attitude I'm looking for, or they don't have the communication skills that I'm looking for. So if you kind of structure the interview where the important questions are up front and then you yeah. dive deeper in and look for those red flags, it's going to improve your, your chances for success. That's true. I love that. And I mean – it's funny. I think people think, you know, on freelance sites, it's just, you know, graphic artists or videos or editors. Um, you know, what are some of the most popular jobs that are they're on free app? Yeah, we have over a hundred skill sets. So from really? writers to graphic designers, to virtual assistants, to bookkeepers, to marketing experts, Facebook ads, um, high level agencies, Amazon, eBay, um, you name it, we have in it. And we work with lots of e-commerce companies, marketing agencies, software companies, real estate agents, all different types of businesses. We, we've really expanded. It's been fun. That's pretty diverse. I would never have thought of real estate. Yeah, it really has been fun. Um, and I mean, you think of like a brick and mortar store or a real estate agent, you don't necessarily think of hiring a lot of people no. or doing remote. Um, but I can't, I mean, we have brick and mortar stores that will hire a, someone to run their social media and that person right. doesn't have to be in the store. So it really opens up a lot of possibilities. That's so true. That's so true. Now I am, I saw on your website that you've got 10 common mistakes outsourcing. You've got the hundred most popular jobs to outsource to online workers. And you've also got a beginner guide to hire online workers with free apps. So I'll have those um, in my show notes. Um, so from your beginner guide to hire online workers with free app, do you have any uh, couple of parting tips? 
Yeah, I mean, we're really there to to support you. And as you're going along the process, if something's off or they're not a fit, we can send more options, we can update the okay. ticket. And a lot of times it really does come down to those three levels and really figuring out, hey, do you have your systems and process in place? Do you have right. projects or do you need someone to bring your own expertise to the table? And if you have systems that you're trying to follow and you're hiring an expert, that doesn't necessarily work. And That's if you true. don't know how to run Facebook ads and you hire someone for five bucks an hour and say, hey, run my ads, here's my budget, <laughs> you're probably not going to have a great experience either. So what we'll do is we won't tell you what you need, but we'll kind of give advice and then yeah. leave it up to you. That's so true because there's often a disconnect in what you think you need and what you really need. <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. So how can people find you? And of course, I'll obviously have show notes, um, the links on the show notes. But yeah, how can people connect with you, Nathan? Yeah, go to freeup.com with three E's. My calendar is right at the top. You can book a free meeting with me. I'd love to talk to you about your hiring needs. Um, create a free account, mention this podcast, get a $25 credit to try us out. And Sweet. Um, yeah, we look forward to helping a lot of you out there with your hiring needs. Awesome. I think this will open the doors to a lot of people because a lot of our entrepreneurs too, they get so busy and so overwhelmed and they just don't know how to get that help, right? And that support so that they're not wearing 50 million hats and burning themselves out. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Of course, you know, the 15 minute cruise to move the needle in your business it goes by quickly. Um, so thanks again, Nathan. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So folks, if you're looking to achieve faster growth through content marketing and sales funnels, look no further than smoothbusinessgrowth.com. So have a profitable and productive week, folks, and may the winds always be at your back. <music>